So formally, observability is about understanding what's happening inside your system by observing its you know, external behavior via telemetry, like your logs, your metrics, your traces, and a whole lot more. But put it more practically, the way I like to think about it is it gives you the clues, the hints, um, and the prompts for you to follow when your favorite page of duty ringtone goes off, and it hopefully helps you bring to uh, closing out your incident channel afterwards in a smooth manner. So that's really what we're striving for when we talk about observability. And of course, you know, collecting all this telemetry generated by these uh, systems at scale these days takes a lot of data. And as we've been hearing all throughout today so far, ClickHouse is incredibly well suited at big data problems. So it's no surprise ClickHouse has been trusted by a ton of different enterprises powering observability at scale, many of which we've been really fortunate to have here talking today in a few minutes, uh, and as well as in attendance here in the audience. But before diving deeper into observability, I want to take a few minutes to talk about why observability sucks, or at least why it sucks today. Today, we still talk a lot about three pillars. That's kind of how we think about observability. You have you know, your logs, your metrics, your traces, and those are kind of the supposed foundations of observability. But if you read between the lines, we're really saying, or a lot of people are saying basically, a silo for your logs, a silo for your metrics, and a silo for your traces. And correlation between these different types of signals, the clues you need to put together to formulate a story to resolve your incident or problem, are all separated in different data stores. And correlation means, at best, an engineer is looking at these three different signals on one dashboard, and they're using their timestamps to help try to correlate across the different signals. It's a really disjoint workflow. It's really three different systems duct taped together and slapped with the name observability on it. At least that's kind of how it's been done so far today. But how do we get into this mess, right? And really, it's because observability has been historically a set of trade-offs that you have to make. You have the trade-off between being cost efficient, being fast at searching, so finding like needle and haystack logs, and fast at aggregation, so be able to do visualizations and uh, trends of data over time. And so far, there hasn't really been a system that does all three, right? Traditionally, your logs databases, you might chuck them into a search engine. And that's really great at searching for a specific log line that you're looking for for a given instant. And it was cost efficient to run. At least maybe that was the case many years ago when data sets were a little bit smaller. But then if you want to see trends of those high carnal events, those logs over time, that's where these search engines really fall short. They're for searching, not for, for aggregation. And then we introduced metric stores, right? These are databases that are specifically built for time series information, and they pre-aggregate a lot of that data, so it's fast to you know, build charts on top of it at query time. But the problem is, when you pre-aggregate that data, to go from a chart, a number on a line, down to the actual source of truth, the original event that emitted that number, is incredibly difficult, if not basically impossible, because all that data has already been thrown away during pre-aggregation. What does this actually look like in practice? For low cardinality metrics, um, you know, say you're on call, you got woken up at 2 AM, and uh, you're being paged for a lot of errors are going off. And at most, your time series database will tell you the number of errors that are happening, some low cardinality uh, labels, such as maybe what region, maybe a few other things. While it tells you that you're having a bad night, it won't tell you why you're going to have such a bad night. And for that, the metrics aren't going to be super useful. So then you might turn into your search database, uh, and there you're going to be looking for, you know, hey, I have errors. What errors are actually happening? And if you have billions of errors, you're going to be looking through billions of different events without any ability to actually understand what is happening uh, in the aggregate. So you can't zoom out again once you kind of found an interesting insight for yourself, right? Really, for true observability, we want the ability to quickly go from your top level aggregations and charts down to your source of truth, find an interesting insight, and then zoom back out again to confirm is that actually the greater trend happening across your entire system. So to be able to seamlessly go between those uh, different modes of operation. So really, for true observability, we need a system that supports fast aggregations over high cardinality, unsampled data that's also cost effective to run at scale so you can actually afford to run it. Or put another way, true observability needs ClickHouse. Of course, I'd be saying this at a ClickHouse conference, but you have to hear me out here, right? 
really, observability is just another data problem, as we've been talking about. And as we know, ClickHouse is incredibly well suited for big data problems. Just looking at ClickHouse, it's incredibly fast. It's known for processing petabytes of data with real time results for queries uh, and ingest. It does this by being incredibly resource efficient with high compression ratios, compute storage isolation for smaller hardwood footprints and easier scaling. It also supports schemaless data thanks to JSON as well. So you could dump in arbitrary you know, shapes of data, logs, and telemetry in the ClickHouse, and it'll handle it in all, all in a very performant manner. And finally, ClickHouse is interoperable with a wide variety of open standards. It's built on top of uh, SQL, and of course supports a lot of different data formats. So no matter how you're storing your data, whether it's you know, Iceberg, Parquet, whether it's on disk or on object storage, ClickHouse is able to interop with that as well. But through this entire story so far, something was missing for observability on ClickHouse. And it's really a ClickHouse native user experience built specifically for observability. We have this really performant database, but then the users need to be able to actually query the data out of it to use it for their specific incident and their specific workflows. So earlier this year, ClickHouse acquired HyperDX, and as part of that, we're really excited to announce ClickStack. ClickStack is a ClickHouse-powered observability stack. It's built for high performance. It's open source, uh, built specific for observability, and it's powered by HyperDX, the visualization layer, ClickHouse, the database we all know and love, uh, and OpenTelemetry, the open standard way of collecting uh, and pipelining telemetry. It's incredibly easy to set up, so you can get up and running in just a minute. In fact, I'll show that uh, in, uh, in the next slide. Um, and also, it works on top of any ClickHouse instance. So you don't have to have a specific one set up with a specific schema. If you're already piping your logs in a ClickHouse today, you could run HyperDX on top of ClickHouse for that data set without having to change any of your data schema. Not to mention, it's built specifically for observability workflows. So whether you're using SQL to do really powerful, you know, specific investigations on very specific questions, or you want to use a simpler uh, natural language-like syntax for searching your logs, all that is possible on top of uh, ClickStack today. And it gives you end-to-end -end visibility. So you can actually instrument everywhere from the client session, so your browsers, all the way back to the infrastructure metrics, and everything in between is visible within ClickStack. And of course, all these components are being built in-house or maintained in-house here at ClickHouse. So we're definitely trying to maximize the benefits of a ClickHouse on top of this. And of course, it's open source and built on open standards of open telemetry. So you can deploy and run this every, uh, anywhere that you want. So that's a lot of, of uh, talking and slides so far. I'd love to switch to a live demo of what it looks like. So this is my terminal. Um, when I told the marketing team I was going to show how easy it is to set up ClickStack, they are like, why are you going to show one command running on the screen? But I'm going to do that just to show you how easy it is to get started. So you can deploy in a single container. Uh, and here I have it running uh, uh, you know, with just a single command. And it bundles everything with ClickHouse, Otel, uh, and HyperDX in a single image. There is a Helm chart if you want Kubernetes. There's a Docker Compose. There's various different ways of deploying it. But this is the simplest one to get started. So now that I have it started, um, I will go ahead and open up our, well, it's a new instance, so I have to go set up the account. So I'm just going to create a very secure password. Um, let's go here, create, and then I'm, you know, where I put in, it uses the Otel exporter, so it already has the uh, schemas being created under the hood uh, by ClickHouse, which is already going to be uh, quite performant for the use case. And, you know, there's an API key generated, so you can, you know, secure the endpoint as well. And just for this you know, local demo, I'm going to really quickly send some telemetry over using telemetry gen, just a CLI tool for sending some example data over. It's going to create a few logs. And then you know, instantly, I have it visible within the UI here. And I'm going to create another set of logs as well, just so that I can have um, you know, a little bit of variety I can actually search on. And then shortly, we should be able to see those logs show up here as well. And to get started, it's, uh, to search, it's really easy. Just go in, you know, type in hello, and there you go. You're doing your searches on top of ClickHouse. This translates it into a, um, as optimized as we can SQL to run under the hood. So even though you're typing in a Lucene-like syntax, it's still running SQL under the hood on top of ClickHouse. Now, this is just a quick example of my local instance. I'm going to switch uh, to actually an instance I have already uh, set up to show a few of the other capabilities, or at least one of the workflows that you can do on top of ClickStack now. 
So say I'm running an e-com website, and um, I've been told, hey, there's some issue with the users checking out uh, on our e-com website recently. Can you help investigate? So I could go into um, the UI here. Uh, let's just go back. I think uh, it might be in like the past day or something like that. Um, and here, there's like a lot of messages going on here. Even if I filter for errors, there's still going to be like a lot of different errors that are happening. I can see there's a clear increase in errors, but there's a lot of them, and it's not clear to me what's driving the issue here, right? So I can switch into um, the event patterns here, and it's going to show me, uh, you know, com basically compressing down all the logs we saw earlier into clusters of similar logs. And I can see very clearly there's definitely a trend with this new error occurring. This is, you know, old errors have always been occurring. There's a new error here. This is really interesting. I can click into this, um, you know, see all the specific issues, see this specific error here. And then, of course, because we're correlating everything together in a single database, it means I can also see my traces from this error log. So now I can see, you know, hey, here's this error span. Let's click in, see, you know, the exact exception, the line of code it actually uh, threw on, so I can get, you know, full visibility as a developer to see what actually happened under the hood here. And then if you put on your infrastructure hat on, you might be like, well, what if it's an infrastructure issue? Is there something going on at the infra level? Uh, you could quickly kind of switch over to the infrastructure tab, again, because all the telemetry is being centralized in a single database. We're able to correlate all this together, so I can see my pod CPU, memory, disk, everything looks fine. There's no like pod restarts or anything like that. And then you could also put on your support hat on, so you can see, or your product engineering hat on, and you can see, hey, what was the user doing in their browser for this specific error? Um, like, what led up to this? And again, everything is being correlated in one place, so that means another tab click away, and we know exactly what the uh, session and what the client looked like while they were doing the checkout that led to this specific issue. So that helps your you know, support and debugging workflows in that case as well. So that's just a really quick look through a single one of the workflows that's available on ClickStack, powered because, you know, with the power of ClickHouse. Um, there's a lot of different other workflows. I won't have time to, you know, go over during this demo. We have this really nice ability to do kind of like uh, correlations between anomalous traces that you can do. Uh, we have the ability to do alerts on top of uh, charts that you can do. Uh, and we also have, you know, really nice out of the box, you know, APM and infrastructure monitoring dashboards that are all kind of powered uh, immediately as soon as you start sending data into ClickStack. So that's it for the demo. If I could go back to my slides. So um, as you see, there's so much that ClickStack can do to help you improve the reliability of your applications and infrastructure. We really wanted to marry the performance um, and efficiency of ClickHouse that enterprises have already been enjoying with the ease of use uh, that you expect out of observability tools today. So it's easy to get set up in just minutes on open source. You can try it out um, as soon as pretty much uh, you open your laptop. And of course, we're not stopping here. We have a really jam-packed roadmap for observability on ClickHouse and ClickStack for the rest of the year. We're bringing the experience I just showed you natively onto ClickHouse Cloud. So if you're already sending your telemetry data into ClickHouse on ClickHouse Cloud, you'll be able to, you'll be able to run that UI directly on top natively in the console. This is entering private preview soon, so please reach out if you have uh, any interest in taking part of that. Um, we're also bringing the ease of PromQL, for example, to ClickHouse as well. Metrics is a big part of the story, and be able to query in the language that's familiar for engineers is really important to us. Um, and we're also going to have a lot of other really exciting things, like be able to provide this whole entire stack experience managed for you in the cloud, inverted indices to continue continue accelerating the full, uh, full text search story, and many, many, many more items as well. So uh, to get started, you can go to clickhouse.com slash O11Y. Everything I've shown today and more is available there. Documentation gets started. We're also in the uh, demo booth, uh, if you go upstairs and down the hall over there, where I'm happy to talk more about any questions you might have. So with that, I'll pass it over to Vlad. Mm -hmm.